Hello friends and welcome to another lecture by Free Shiksha. Today we will discuss about the complex numbers and the basic concept of this topic. So let's start with understanding the concept of iota. So we know that the domain of a square root function goes from 0 to infinity. What this means is that if you have a function f of x which is equal to under root of x then it's valid for all x greater than or equal to 0. But there is one point to it. This thing holds only true for the real functions. What this means is that when I say my x should be greater than or equal to 0, what I intend to do is make this f of x a real function, a real value. So what happens to your under root x when your x is less than 0, when it's negative? So Euler was the first one to give the concept to deal with the square root of negative numbers. He introduced the concept of iota which is represented by this i or j at some places where this i is nothing but it's equal to under root of minus 1. He called this as an imaginary unit. So now under root of any negative number is possible to be represented in terms of iota. How? Let's look at this. You have an under root of minus 4. This can equally be represented by under root minus 1 into under root of 4. This under root of minus 1 can now be written as iota and under root 4 we all know is 2. So this under root of minus 4 can now be represented as iota 2 or 2 iota and similarly under root minus 10 can be represented as iota root 10 or 10 or under root 10 iota and so on. The quantities that you have in multiplication with iota this complete quantity 2 iota and under root 10 iota is known as an imaginary number or an imaginary quantity. So point to note here is that any real quantity see that root 10 and 2 are real values. When they are multiplied with iota they become an imaginary number or imaginary quantity. Now the integral powers of iota. Since iota is under root of minus 1 so iota square is obviously equal to minus 1. And your iota cube can be written as equal to iota square into iota which is equal to minus 1 as iota square is minus 1 into iota which goes equal to minus of iota. And similarly iota raised to the power 4 is nothing but is equal to 1. And for higher powers of iota what we do is we write the higher power say if the higher power is some n we write it as 4m plus r where your m is any integer and r can take value between these 4 0 1 2 and 3 what happens by doing this is that if you have written your higher powers in terms of 4m plus r this can be equally represented as iota raised to the power 4m cross iota raised to the power r now this iota raised to the power 4m is nothing but iota raised to the power 4 cross iota raised to the power 4 cross iota raised to the power 4 till m times and each of those iota raised to the power 4 is nothing but is equal to 1 so this complete quantity goes equal to 1 and what you are left with is iota raised to the power r so your r can take values between 0 1 2 and 3 and depending upon that the value of iota raised to the power n will be 1 iota minus 1 and minus iota respectively Let's take some examples. So if you have iota raised to the power 4, I can write it in terms of 4m plus r, where my m is 1 and r is also equal to 1. This becomes equal to iota by the previous slide. If you see, iota raised to the power 4m plus r becomes equal to iota raised to the power r ultimately. So this becomes equal to iota raised to the power 1, which is nothing but iota. Similarly, if you have iota raised to the power 10, it becomes equal to iota raised to the power 2 ultimately which is nothing but minus 1 so your r is 2 here for iota raised to the power 15 your r is 3 for 20 your r is 0 and the value is equal to 1 what for the negative values so if you have a negative power of iota what you can do simply is write this as 1 upon iota raised to the power 21 and then do the similar thing with the denominator so I write this 21 as 4 cross 5 plus 1 which becomes ultimately equal to 1 upon iota 
I multiply numerator and denominator both by iota cube. Why? Because doing so will make my denominator equal to iota raised to the power 4 and that is what you should always do. So this becomes equal to 1. What you are left with is iota cube which is nothing but minus iota. Or else you can adopt a second approach as well which is writing this iota raised to the power minus 21 as iota raised to the power 4 cross minus 6 plus 3. This eventually becomes equal to minus 21. You have minus 6 as an integer, a negative integer. So this whole becomes equal to 1. And what you are left with is iota cube, which is nothing but equal to minus iota. So your m here is minus 6 and r is equal to 3. So now let me introduce to you the concept of complex numbers. So a quantity of the form z equal to a plus iota b is called a complex number where your a and b are real numbers. This a is called the real part of z, the complex number, which is represented by r e z. And your b is called the imaginary part of z, which is represented by this. So now your z can also be written as real part of z plus iota times imaginary part of z. This whole quantity, as I already told you, is an imaginary number. This imaginary part of z is also a real quantity but when it's multiplied with iota it becomes as a whole an imaginary number or imaginary quantity. So for example if you have 3 plus 4 iota then your real part is 3 and imaginary part is 4. Another example could be your z equal to 5. Now here the real part of z is 5 and the imaginary part of z is equal to 0. So even your real values can also be written in terms of this complex number or the standard form as we call it. Similarly, if you have z equal to 6 iota, then its real part is 0 and imaginary part is 6. But this can still be written in terms of complex number. In the next lecture, we'll have a look at the algebra of complex number, the modulus and conjugate of complex number, finding the square root of complex number and some more examples and in the coming lectures as I'll proceed with this topic I'll discuss the cube root of unity and the different representations of complex numbers and then we'll look at some of the typical problems also that come from this topic so that's all we had from this topic thank you so much and then we'll look at some of the typical problems also that come from this topic so that's all we had from this topic. Thank you so much.